Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to the stars of theatre and the most talked about musical, I think, in West End history is opening next week. And I thought we'd speak to the number one reviewer in Britain, the most respected. Mark Shenton is the man who knows it all. And I'm delighted to say he joins us now from Broadway. How are you? Good. Hi, Alex. I'm in New York as we speak, uh, catching the newest shows. Hamilton, of course, has been here for a number of years now, and it's now pretty much old news, but still still going very strong. I'm not wrong in saying there hasn't been this amount of hype with this higher price ticket before it's even opened of any other musical in history in the West End, is there? Uh, it's pretty extraordinary. Um, I mean, the show has had such a head of steam on it ever since it opened at the public theatre downtown. Um, and it's just been unstoppable. Uh, it, it's, it, it takes more money than any other show on Broadway every week, uh, over $3 million a week most weeks. And, and that's, of course, generated by the fact that they sell so many premium pricing tickets, which are the, you know, there's a set uh, top price and then there's a, a flexible price beyond that, that if the demand... Uh, Meets, is, is, is there for it um, people pay anything to go and see it I've given up I've been to Broadway five times since it's been on there has never been a ticket available that I could afford it's the same in the West End is that okay I mean it's supply and demand people want to see it therefore they'll charge what they like is it okay that they're starting at about 200 and going up into the thousands to see it certainly this year in the West End yes uh, well of course you, you have to do separate what's the official price at the box office and the secondary ticket market uh, the producers have no control over the secondary ticket market although uh, Cameron McIntosh uh, is making very strenuous efforts. People are going to have to show ID at the theatre to collect their tickets so they can't sell on their tickets. But uh, you're absolutely right. This is a, a supply and demand market. The, it, it, people are charging what the market will bear. Uh, but on the other hand, I do think it's, it's a dangerous precedent because it sings, sends out a signal to um, the, the general public that theatre is unaffordable. Mm. And of course, it's not true. It's this show may be unaffordable because it's, it's, it's so in demand. But actually, by and large, you can get to most a lot of shows in the West End for twenty quid, so it's it's you know it's crazy to, to talk about to focus on the two hundred pound or, or and above tickets when there are so many other shows you can and see at, at less. But of course, this is the show everybody wants to see because it's what everybody's talking about. Okay, everybody's talking about Jamie at the moment. We like that. I haven't seen Hamilton. Is it worth the hype? Do you know, I, it's funny because I saw, of course, everybody saw about Jamie again just last week. Um, and, and I suddenly thought to myself that Hamilton actually has a real run for its money on here because uh, Jamie is so brilliant and so authentically British um, uh, that uh, Hamilton is, in a, is a totally different show. But actually, they'll, they'll obviously both be in contention with each other for the awards um, come uh, next uh, next year. Um, and... Uh, uh, they're, they're both groundbreaking in, 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 a, different, in a very different way. Um, so there are similarities in, 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 uh, in the fact that they both uh, advance the form of musical theatre. Hamilton, of course, is a very specifically American subject. Um, uh, it's a, a, a man who one of the founding fathers of the, the, the American nation. Um, and uh, it's, it's a distant history that we don't really know in Britain. But I don't think that actually matters. I think it's, it's, the show is so vibrant and alive that it will transcend the fact that we don't actually really know the facts of, of what it's about. Um, uh, the f- fact is everybody's heard of this musical now. Um, even if they didn't know who Hamilton was before that, they certainly know now. Um, uh, he is the, the figure on the $10 bill. Um, he's probably his most famous uh, um, fact uh, uh, in, in America. But uh, it, it, it's, it's such an extraordinary show. It, the, the score is one of the most vibrant um, and alive modern musicals I've ever heard. Um, it, 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 once upon a time, musicals were the pop music of their day. Now... This is a this is a musical that, for the first time in decades, is actually taken. You know, could, is the sort of music that could be heard on the charts. About ten fifteen years ago, I was there on Broadway and interviewed a young man called Lin Manuel Miranda. He'd got this hit called In the Heights. It's hard to believe from that little show he'd go on to be a global megastar and the hottest ticket in town. I mean, this man can't do wrong at the moment, can he? Absolutely. I mean, in, well, In the Heights. It's very interesting because In the Heights was running in London. A few, uh, when Hamilton first opened on Broadway and seeing them back to back as I saw then you could see how Hamil- Hamilton led on from In the Heights you could see the influences although In the Heights is a totally different show and very conventional in its structure but the musical ingenuity and the 
and the musical invention is there. So uh, he, he is a phenomenal talent. I mean, what's going to be interesting to see is what, what comes next. I mean, what's he going to write next? That's what everybody's well waiting for, because Hamilton is now four years old. So, uh, you know, we, we need his next show. That pressure, though, is unbearable, isn't it? How can you top this, this huge hype? I've never known anything like it. No, it is. It has been extraordinary. And, and what's extra- well, the most extraordinary thing about it, frankly, I think, is, is that it's fully deserved. Um, you know, often shows get overhyped. I don't think it's possible to overhype this. I recently interviewed the man who um, uh, runs the public theatre where the show originated, Oscar Eustace, and he said that, uh, he told me that, that when it was in, 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 in performance at the public, he would try to, you know, overstate it to people. He would try to say to people, you know, this is the greatest musical ever written, um, and see what, what their reaction would be, and they, he said they would come out of the show and say it's actually better than you said it was. So, wow. so I don't, I don't think it's possible to actually overstate how brilliant it is. And in terms of the music, I mean, there's no flying witch or giraffes in this. What are we getting? Are we getting comedy songs? Are we getting? We know we're getting sort of pop rap. We know that's sort of his shtick, yes, isn't it? Yes. What, what do we get as a show? Is it funny? There's not too much humour. No, I mean it's 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 quite earnest, very powerful because the way the, it basically it it moves in such a ecstatic way uh, the choreography and the music integrate so seamlessly um, and you just feel yourself swept along by it it's difficult to describe because it's, it's a very uh, it's a show that you, you just feel it to your core um, I, I, I think it's, it's sensational truly just a few final questions about the West End at the moment if you had a hundred quid to see any show I know you probably couldn't get into Hamilton what would be your top three at the moment if we were going into the West End well I think Follies at the National is unmissable. Mm. I've seen that four times so far, and I'm getting a fifth. It's the revival of the Stephen Sondheim musical from the 70s, um, and it has an amazing cast at the National, and you can't get a ticket for love or money, but uh, it has Imelda Staunton, Janie D, Philip Cost, uh, and it's just wonderful. Um, I also really, really rate everybody's talking about Jamie. Uh, you probably won't need to spend £200 to get into that, because you can get tickets to see it. And a show that I really, really loved and surprised myself loving was Young Frankenstein at the Gallery. Me too. Um, this, is the, this is the Mel Brooks musical that uh, is a sequel to uh, the producers. Um, Mel wrote it himself, wrote the score himself. Um, and when it opened on Broadway, it, was, it, wasn't, it just wasn't very good. And suddenly in London, it's brilliant. Uh, mm. It's really funny, um, really, really beautifully performed. Uh, I, I really recommend that for a good laugh. Yeah, I was disappointed. Some of the press were picking up on the fact that it's misogynistic and all of this stuff. Look, leave your brain at the door. It's Mel Brooks. It's hysterical. That thing with a horse in the opening 20 minutes is one of the most funny things I've ever seen in a theatre. Yeah, it's great. It's really great. Um, and, and beautifully performed. I mean, great cast. Uh, it, it's just a riot. Just a lot of fun. Seems like it's been a great year for theatre. We had things like working at Southwark, which was just tremendous. There's a lot on the road at the yes. moment. For you, has it been a great year? Yeah, and absolutely. Um, uh, you know, there's all we. We, we were really, really blessed in London. There's so much great theatre on. Um, I've also loved American in Paris this year. I thought that was wonderful. It didn't work at the box office, but it was really beautiful. Um, that was a stunning import from Broadway again. Um, so we've, we've had some really, really good shows. And we move forward to 2018. I suppose it's going to be all about Hamilton. Uh, yes, although there are already new, other new shows announced for next year. So, so the, the, the truth is that it, you know, the West End is never about just one show. On Broadway, it is often like that. Broadway coalesces around one show in particular. And then, you know, right now, obviously, there's Hamilton from the previous season. But this year's show has been Dear Evan Hansen that everyone talks about. And Come From Away as well has also been a big success here. But um, there no, there's no, usually isn't room for more than two or three shows at a time in, in, in New York. On broad, uh, in the West End, we, we, we can choose from a very wide palette. And, and that's really good because it means there's always something for everybody. What was your gem of the year? Did you love Bet in Hello, Dolly? What was your highlight? Yeah, Bet Midler was fantastic in Hello, Dolly over here. Um, I, I, did, I did like that very much. Um, uh, it's, it was not my absolute highlight. Um, I, I was really surprised by Come From Away, actually. It's this sort of folk musical that uh, mm. uh, is just beautifully done uh, about uh, the planes that were diverted to Newfoundland uh, at, on 9-11. Um, and it creates this really beautiful folk musical out of a, a, a true story. But the show for me that uh, is the highlight of the year, the show I saw nine times in all, six times on Broadway, was Groundhog Day that came from the Old Vic and I think is just a masterpiece. 
Unfortunately, it didn't catch on and it's no longer running on Broadway, but it's, it's actually one of my favourite shows of, of not just of this year, but of any year. I, I think it's in my top 10 musicals mm. of all time. Such a shame, and you could never guess. I mean, we both sat there on preview week. Again, who would have thought that that didn't quite work? I think they screwed up the Tonys. They put in the wrong song. It was very unspectacular yes. and not really grabbing an audience. Obviously, a good number, a good show of the Tonys would have helped, but it's not It's not about one song. Um, the fact is that Broadway can only sustain one or maybe mm. two shows at a time or new shows at a time because it's very expensive to see a show on Broadway. It's now you know, uh, upwards of two, you mentioned 200 pounds for Hamilton in the West End. Uh, Broadway, you know, two hundred dollars um, and and counting, um, and, and tickets go up to, you know, uh, right now Bruce Springsteen's on Broadway. The tickets are eight hundred dollars <laughs> a piece. Um, so it's expensive to go see a Broadway show. People can't see them all, so they have to make to make choices. And the choice that many children will be making on Broadway next year and the year after that in the West End may be Frozen. Is it again worth the hype? Did they do the business? Uh, absolutely. I, I actually went out to Denver for the opening night. Um, in the summer and, and it was amazing uh, it's directed by a Brit Michael Randage and designed by his partner Christopher Orham it's spectacular it's, it delivers on everything that you want Frozen to deliver on um, you know it, it, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not its target audience but I loved it so um, and, and you know and all the little girls dressed up in their, their, their princess uh, in their outfits were adoring it so I, that's going to be a smash it's almost too big to get wrong isn't it they had to get that yeah. right Yeah. congratulations on everything thank you so much much for your time today. Mark Shanton is the man when it comes to reviews in the UK and we thank you for your time. If they want to reach you on Twitter, at Shenton Stage is the place to find Mark Shenton, the top reviewer in the UK. Thank you for your time and Merry Christmas. And you too.